This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hello, friends. My name is Denise Renner, and I welcome you to my program. I am so excited about what I have to share with you today. Oh, I cannot wait to open up the scriptures to you today. I'm going to talk about our great salvation. It says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, that we have a great salvation salvation. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Well, before we get started, though, if you have any prayer request, please let us know what's going on in your life. We would like to join hands with you in prayer and come before the Lord with you and present those petitions before him. And agree with you. And see what God can do. And the difference that he can make in that situation. And if God's doing something special in your life, we absolutely want to hear from you. We love reading your responses. So we're going to get started. Well, we started in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, that says... We have a great salvation. And there's two things that I want to talk to you about today, about our great salvation. And that is, it wasn't your idea. It wasn't my idea to get saved. I didn't choose him. He chose me. You didn't choose him. He chose you. And the second thing is that when you got saved, when you got born again, when you repented, you received a down payment, which was the guarantee of heaven. That down payment that you received and I received was the Holy Spirit. Now, the reason I'm talking to you about this is because recently I've had some loved ones. I've had friends who've had loved ones that they died for either one reason or another reason. And I thought, you know what? I need to know more about what's going on in heaven. And I want to open that up to you. That's in Revelation chapter 4. And, and when, I, when I read these scriptures to you, I don't want you to think that this is just a scripture, words written in a book. This is reality. This is going on right now. So it says in verse 8 of chapter 4 in Revelation, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they did not rest day or night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. That's going on right now. And whenever the living creatures would give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne who lives forever and ever, then something else happens in verse 10. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and they were created. I got so excited reading those scriptures. I'm getting excited right now. Because when we talk about heaven, we're talking about a deposit that's already been made in your born again spirit. That's why we can get excited and encouraged when we read those scriptures that talks about what is going on in heaven. It's amazing. And just think of it. If you have loved ones or friends, they're there right now 
Well, then I knew the scripture that said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I was thinking about, okay, my loved ones, your loved ones, your friends that for whatever reason have gone on to be with the Lord, if they're Christians, they're absent from their body, but they're present with the Lord. And they're experiencing this great praise and adoration and glory that's being given to God right now. Isn't that so amazing? And so I was in uh, 2 Corinthians and I was in chapter 5. And that's where that's written, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Well, then I kept reading and it said in verse 5, and I'll read it to you. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee or a down payment. So what has he prepared for us? Well, he's prepared for us a new body. And it's not, the Bible says it's not made with hands, but it is made eternal in the heavens. So this, we're going to put off this earthly tent. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, we're going to put this earthly tent. It even calls this body. Can you imagine a tent? <laughs> we're going to put that off and then we're going to receive this eternal one. So go back to verse 5, and it says that it's been pre prepared for us and given to us by the Spirit as a guarantee. The guarantee is a down payment. Now, maybe you're getting ready to buy a house or an apartment or a car or something else, and you need to put a down payment on it. Well, when you put that down payment, and banks or people, they like to give, a, they like for to receive a big percentage, maybe 10%, maybe 20%. But when you put that down payment down, that means that you're serious, and that that house, or that apartment, or that car, that that's yours now. You've put your claim on it. You put the down payment. Well, the way that God shows that he's serious about putting a down payment down on you, down on me, and showing us his purchasing power, his redeeming power, was he put that down payment and the down payment that he put down wasn't money, it wasn't silver, it wasn't gold. It was the Holy Spirit, the very presence of himself. He put a down payment for you, down on the inside of you, he put his very presence, his holy presence on the inside of you as a down payment for heaven. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. That down payment there in you, inside of you, it carries a message. Okay, what does that down payment, if you make a down payment for, uh, to a bank, for a house, for a car, for an apartment, what does that say to the bank? That bank, that down payment says that that car or that apartment or that house, that that is yours, that you're serious, that you're buying that. And that down payment of the Holy Spirit that's inside of you has a message. And that message is this property, this person, this temple, it doesn't belong to them. 
it belongs to me. You could say that we had a sign over ourselves that said, I don't belong to this world. I don't belong to myself. I belong to God. He has put a down payment on me. That down payment that he has put on me is his Holy Spirit, his very presence inside of me. Is that fantastic? Is that fantastic? Now, let me ask you a question. Did you have anything to do with paying that down payment? No. No. I didn't have a thing to do with paying that down payment. Did you become so good that God said, oh, okay, this person is just so good. I just want to dwell inside of them. I want to put myself inside of them. No, that didn't happen. Did you choose him to be your savior on your own? No, that didn't happen. Because the Holy Spirit, our spirit, was dead. Our spirit could not choose God, but the Holy Spirit, he came, he gave us the grace, he gave, he gave us the faith that we one day said, okay, God, I give you my life. If you're real, God, show me yourself. God, I repent of my sin. God, I give you my life. God, forgive me of my sin. Whatever you said to him, he gave you the grace and the mercy to give you that power to say that. You didn't choose him. He, he chose you. I told you I was going to talk about our great salvation. And part of it is this down payment. And part of it is that it wasn't your idea. Let me give you an example. Remember the Apostle Paul? It says that in Acts that he was on his way to go kill more Christians. He was already killing Christians. He, he held the clothes for the people who were stoning Stephen. Uh, he enjoyed killing Christians. He enjoyed seeing them scream. He enjoyed seeing their blood. He enjoyed seeing them suffer. This is the kind of man that the Apostle Paul was. He was zealous for the death of Christians because he thought it was against the Jewish faith. Well, something happened one day when he was on the road to Damascus. The Bible says that a great light shined upon him. He was blinded. It, the power of it knocked him off of his horse and he said out of his mouth, Lord, in that very moment, he was apprehended by the power of God. And I'm using that word apprehended because in Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul uses the word apprehended. The word apprehended means in the Greek language, it's the word katalambano. It means to take down. It means to seize. It means to conquer. So you and I, we were walking in our life, doing whatever we were doing, having whatever thoughts we were having, just like the Apostle Paul. The power of God came upon us. It wasn't our idea. The power of God came upon us. It seized us. It apprehended us. It brought great control over us. And out of our mouths or out of our heart came faith and grace to call upon the Lord. And at that moment, we received the down payment of the Holy Spirit. That's what happened to the Apostle Paul. That's what happened to you. Now let me just read you this verse out of Philippians so that you see more clearly that you were apprehended. It says in verse 12 of chapter 3 of Philippians, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay a hold, take a hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid a hold of me. 
He says, I want to take a hold. I want to pull down the thing for which God has taken me down for. He apprehended me. He took control over me. Again, dear friend, this happened to you. If you're born again, it happened to you. He came on you for a purpose. Now look at verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. No, we have not apprehended what it was that God ha has, has taken us down for. But we're pressing forward. That's what it says. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. That's what you and I are doing. We recognize we've been apprehended. That he's taken us down. It wasn't our idea. And then in doing that, he put in us a deposit, a guarantee, a down payment of his very self, of his very presence. And I said to you already that that is a sign that we do not belong to this world or ourselves we belong to him. This was his design. This was his great plan. And this down payment, the Holy Spirit, is the guarantee that your friends or my friends or, or my loved ones or your loved ones, if you've lost someone in this year or, or last year, or recently, or maybe years ago, that down payment is the guarantee. That presence of the Holy Spirit is the guarantee that when they left their body, they were present with the Lord. That when they got into heaven, they had access to go right into heaven because of the down payment, the Holy Spirit. I think this is so comforting. This is part of our great salvation. You know, Jesus said that he destroyed the power of death. He said, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? It's been swallowed up in the death and the burial of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to fear death because it's been conquered. And we've been given the presence of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us as a down payment that when we do go or when your loved one went or when your friend went and they were born again, they had a guarantee that they weren't going to, they were their, their death wasn't terrible, but that it was a change of address. And that deposit brought them right into the presence of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. It says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Could there be anything greater than to be present with him? You know, Apostle Paul said in, in Philippians, he has said, you know, this prison that I'm in, it's so terrible. And actually, I'd really rather go to heaven because it would be much better for me there. But I choose to stay here so that I can minister to you. But he said that to go to heaven would be much better. Why am I talking to you about this? I want to talk to you about your great salvation and the salvation of your friend or your loved one that's gone on. Your loved one, I just want to tell you what's happening with them. They're smarter than you. They're happier than you. They're wiser than you. They're healthier than you. And they're waiting for you. Oh, this is so comforting. And for a Christian... This is not the end of their life. If they went on to be with God, this is not the end of their life. This is a new beginning. And when they enter heaven, 
there's just enough down payment there for them to be accepted. That's the Holy Spirit. For you and I, the Holy Spirit on the inside of us is very adequate. The exact down payment, His very self, His very presence, that if you die today, or you drop dead on the floor right now, or we die in our sleep tonight, that we are present with the Lord. This is important, friend, that we know this, that we understand this, that we take this. I was just in, a, in the United States not very long, and I was with somebody, and six people, six people that they loved and cherished had died you know, Christians are the one with the comfort. I was talking to a Muslim, witnessing to a Muslim one time. And I was telling him about our great salvation. And he said to me, you know, you Christians, you're really lucky. He said, because you know where you're going when you die. He said, he said, me as a Muslim, I, I don't know yet because I don't know if I got enough points or not. If I did enough good or not. Well, our salvation is not weighing on if we did enough good or not. Our salvation is weighing on our trust and our dependence upon the blood of Jesus and what he did for us and that he gave us this great salvation and that he put on the inside of us this down payment of his very own presence, the Holy Spirit. You know, I said to that Muslim man that day, I said, you know what? You're right. I am very blessed. I'm not wondering that if I died right now, that I would either go to hell or I'd go to heaven. But I would go to heaven because of Jesus, because of his blood, because of his sacrifice, because of my trust in that blood, and because of his very presence, the Holy Spirit is a down payment, a guarantee, a surety on the inside of me that if I die, if I'm absent from my body, I'm going to be present with the Lord. Mm. So good. Such great news. Oh, I just want to pray with you because I know probably you, you have lost someone and there's a comforter, the Holy Spirit. He's on the inside of you right now. The down payment on the inside of you. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we recognize the mighty, powerful presence of of the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of us. Not only is he our guarantee into heaven and of our friends or our loved ones if they knew you, Lord, but he is the comforter. I thank you for his comforting and healing power right now over my friend. We thank you, Lord, that you are right here with us. Your presence is here with us. That's right, friend. Just take that comfort right now, the Holy Spirit. I hear from some of you that when we're talking and we're speaking together about the Word of God, that the Holy Spirit is touching you as I'm speaking. I believe He's touching you. Just raise your hand. Just say, Holy Spirit, I receive your comfort right now. I take your comfort that I have your presence in me right now. I have your down payment in me right now. My friend who just died, they had your down payment and they're in your presence right now. Lord, I receive this reality to my heart, to my mind, 
and to my soul. And I thank you for that in the powerful and the magnificent name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, friend, let me know what God is doing in your life. And again, if you have any prayer request, we want to know about it. We want to agree with you in prayer. We do not want you to be alone. God never meant for us to be alone, but for us to uphold and encourage and strengthen one another. And we're there for you to pray for you just for that purpose, to help you carry that burden and to bring it to the Lord. It's been my privilege. It's been my great honor to speak with you today about our great salvation, which, number one, it was not our idea. And number two, we have received a great down payment the Holy Spirit on the inside, the guarantee of heaven. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Women are powerful and very influential, but what kind of power and influence they have depends on what has happened inside their hearts. The Bible tells us of women like Jezebel, a woman who had no touch of God in her heart and used her influence to destroy her husband, her sons, and her nation. But the Bible also gives examples of women who were supportive, godly, helpful, and delivering. In this amazing 10-part series, 10 Powerful Women with Rick and Denise Renner, you will learn about an unnamed woman who changed history, a woman God radically changed, a woman who saved her nation, a woman who was delivered of demons by Jesus, a woman who gave her living room to Jesus, a woman preacher in the New Testament. Whether you are a man or a woman, this powerful series will help you embrace who God wants you to be and is available in digital or physical format starting at just $20. In addition, we are also offering you the book, All the Women of the Bible. The world needs men and women to embrace their God-given destiny and to make a difference in the lives of those around them. This book is filled with examples of 400 named and unnamed women of the Bible, and it is amazing. We know it will be a blessing to you. This insightful book by Herbert Lockyer can be yours for just $19. Don't miss this special offer, this series, 10 Powerful Women, and the book, All the Women of the Bible. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now.